Our next speaker has experienced end of life care from the perspective, um, a perspective that really no mother would ever want to. And that's um, because she's the parent of a teenage boy who had cancer. Now her son, Donald Walsh, um, died in May, 2013. And he had a positive, me positive message for his generation, which was to live life to the full. And in carrying on his legacy, um, my guest has become a strong advocate for patients' rights and also for suicide prevention among the young. Elmo Walsh um, of the Donald Walsh Live Life Foundation, you're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Are you there, Elma? How are you? I can hear you. I can't see you. I know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> anyway, um, um, but um, yeah, first of all, Elma, I've heard lots about Donald's story, and it's easy for me to assume that everyone knows his story. But could you tell us briefly about his life? Um, Donald was like any other teenage, any other young person, in all honesty. He, um, oh, I see you now. You he was like any other young person, in all honesty. He loved his football, he loved his rugby, he loved his sports. And, um, you know, he, he was quite bright going to school. Um, he lived a normal life up to when he was 12 years old. At 12, he got cancer on his leg, uh, an osteosarcoma. And, um, he, he dealt with it, you know, he dealt with it fairly well and, um, and he, it was a learning curve for us and it was a learning curve for him as well because we didn't have cancer in the family before so it was all a new terminology mm -hmm. and um, medical terminology that we had to go through and everything. And, um, but he got on with it and he, lived, uh, he, did, he came through it, he got the operation, had an operation in the leg, went through the chemotherapy and everything and um, he um, he survived it for uh, he didn't get cancer again for about three years after that, mm -hmm. and um, it was after he had lung cancer then and again we went through it again the chemotherapy, um, an operation again where some of his lungs removed and um, he was fifteen at that stage he was twelve when he first got cancer he was fifteen at that stage and. Um, so it was more, we knew more about it, knew more of what was going to happen and what was going on and everything at that stage. So, um, yeah, he lived a normal life the same as anybody else. Mm -hmm. He was told um, in October then he got the lung cancer in February and then in October he was told that he had a lot more tumours. So that's when mm -hmm. things got more serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really, his, um, obviously he came to prom prominence. Um, we're going to show... Um, a short video that I think that the family has put together of him, um, but just maybe as we're lining up, um, lining yes, well, up. This video, uh, yeah, maybe this video was bit about um, made by students in County Dublin, and it kind of ah. recaps the story about Donald, and that's the video that we show. Okay. God has given me this challenge, like, but. I may be used as a symbol for other people to appreciate life more. I remember your bare feet down the hallway. I remember your lids all left. Race cars on the kitchen floor. Plastic dinosaurs. I love you to the moon and back. Looking into mine Like we had our own secret club I remember you dancing Before bedtime Then jumping on me I'm Donna, like me I'm 16 On the 15th of February 2012 I was diagnosed with cancer for the second time in my life And even in the moment I knew You fought it hard like an army guy Remember I Leaned in and whispered to you Come on baby with me, we're gonna fly away from here I kind of always done that, is kind of not sit down and wallow in my sorrows Like there's no point, like crying's not gonna get me anywhere is it? If even from this illness now that I have, I'm, I cried the first day and I promised myself that was it Because 
Does it's not gonna get me anywhere, it's not gonna make me any happier. It's not gonna make the next few months any easier like flowers piled up in the worst way. No one knows what to say about a beautiful boy who died. And it's about to be Halloween. You could be anything. You wanted if you were still here. I remember the last day when I kissed your face. I just didn't want them to see suicide as a solution to any of life's problems. It hurts me to see them think about it, to see it among their friends. But it kills me because I'm here fighting for my life for the third time. I've no say in anything. And I'm still here waking up every day and then they think that they have a problem and this might be a solution that does make me angry and I'm I'm not gonna lie about it like but like I've nothing against people with mental illness course, or anything yeah. like that the, but these people have to realize that there is help Several thousand people attended the funeral of Donald Walsh in Tralee, County Kerry today. The 16-year-old died after the weekend following a battle with cancer. Mourners were told not to forget his powerful words that life is a precious gift and irreplaceable. And what if I really thought some miracle would see us through? But what if the miracle was even getting one moment with you? Oh, the summertime is coming And the trees are sweetly blooming Where the wild mountain time Grows around the blooming heather would you go? I thought the Donald Walsh documentary was really inspirational and it taught me not to take anything for granted and just to live life to the full. The thing with Donald Walsh I teach was that like sometimes you need to just get on with life and stop wallowing your own self pity and like he was a real good a big role model for teens our age like. I found it heartbreaking but inspirational to see the effect that he had on young people. The documentary really affected me because I saw that someone who knew the time was limited, was so positive about life, and he lived it to the full. Crystal fountain, and around it I will place all the colours of the mountain. Would you go, Lassie, go? And we'll all go together with the wild mountain time grows around the blooming heather would you go deeply spiritual heartbreaking go. yet uplifting courageous like an angel moving fearless inspirational sad but hard down the hallway i love you to the moon and back Powerful video, Elma, and um, just a, a message has come in. Elma and the Walsh family uh, are a true inspiration. Thank you, Elma, for everything you have done and continue to do to promote Donald's message. And uh, El Elma, just we're talking about this um, this bill, and, and I suppose you have two particular perspectives on it. You know, one is in relation to your work with, um, I suppose, uh, getting across a message to vulnerable young people. You know, um, uh, to live life to the full, and the other is is having experienced uh, palliative care. But um, how would you kind of think that the availability of su assisted suicide um, would affect the message you're trying to get across to young people? Um, well, I think it would be the wording of it would be wrong for a start, and um, and they wouldn't, you know, they just see the headlines. They wouldn't go into detail about it much or anything like that. And I think it's very important to, to stress the headlines. Like every doctor there, and this, everybody that spoke there this morning, including Connor and everybody, they went into great depth and everything that, uh, that young people wouldn't go into unless it was totally explained to them. And you really, really have to go around and speak to young people in general to explain the, the implications mm. that, um, that are there for them and how, how life can be undermined, I suppose, really, mm. you know? Um, the the other uh, um, thing, having kind of gone through um, 
a, a long road with Donal, um, you saw him suffer a lot. So what would you say to the person who says, I just want, don't want to see my loved one suffer? Yeah, um, well, you know, when Donal was first diagnosed terminal, um, I'm going to kind of uh, personalise what every doctor there said this morning because it all rang bells with me. Um, when he was first diagnosed, we had to meet the parish care doctor in Tralee, a lovely lady, Dr. Patricia Sheehan. And we, I, to be honest with you, myself included, I was in no hurry to meet her because I had this impression in my head that I was meeting the person who was going to help my son to die. And I didn't want to meet that person. But I can safely say that after meeting her and the group of people over in palliative care in Tralee, you know, that um, I've made friends for life there. They're absolutely brilliant. They helped us in every single step of the way. Um, they allayed our fears of what was going to be ahead of us. You know, we, we had our own ideas and things, but they had to put them into words and everything. And um, when Finbar asked her, when, what you're using, what he said, when will the time be that what you're using to treat Donald will be that which will cause his death? And she replied and she said, my, I'm managing your son's pain, your son's pain, and that's my job. You know, that was the palliative care doctor's job. And they took exceptional care of Donald. And they were second to none, but it is. Over the years then, since then, we've met a lot of people from, that have been through palliative care. And they have the same experience that the palliative care team looked after all their worries, all their stresses and all their little um, things that they were worried about. And at the time, Truly only had one a day unit. They didn't have an uh, overnight unit um, that they have now. And so when his medication was changed to methadone, and you were talking about drugs there earlier on with drugs, living with drugs, that people die with drugs. Don lived with drugs. Don went to nightclubs and he went to rugby matches and football matches with methadone in his pocket to take it, you know, when, he's, when the time was right to take it. Mm. Um, so he had to go to Marymount. So we experienced Marymount hospice as well. And they couldn't do enough for him there, even making making sure that they put cocoa pops and burritos on the menu for him. Um, but um, we went to Cork CUH for radiation. And again, it was some of the time it was difficult for Donald. But the nurses and doctors there gave him the time and they spoke to him and they treated him with the utmost respect. And from dealing with palliative care and medical teams from Dublin, Cork and Tralee, the one thing that they all did was reassure Dola and he knew that his worries and fears were top priority to them. Mm. While end of life for your child is not a thing that any parent wants to go through and knowing that life isn't perfect, it certainly made it easier knowing the palliative care teams across the country will help the patient and the family feel, fulfill some of the ambitions in the short time that they have left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. Elma, um, I, I could ask you so many questions and, and um, there, there's, there's so many uh, things that I'd like to ask you, um, but just with uh, the time in the conference, I'd love if you could stay uh, for, for, for the Q&A and we may be able to put more questions to you. But I'd just like to really just uh, thank you for, um, for, for coming on today and, and um, sharing on this issue because you, you've, you've so much to give and um, e even though I'm sure it's not easy uh, for you having to kind of rewatch <laughs> uh, so, so, so many times, um, you know, something that was a, a real, you know, just uh, such a painful time for you. I have to say that one of the most satisfying things uh, for me in my job as a radio journalist is meeting people like you um, because um, our country is, is full of people like you who, who experience tragedy and um, turn, it, turn it around for the good of others. And uh, it's, just, <laughs> it's just one of the best things uh, about this country. It's something that I'm very proud of. It's a beautiful thing to see. So thank you for, uh, for all that you do. And I'm sure I'm saying that on behalf of, of everyone joining us today. No, thank you, Alma. Just try to benefit people in different ways yeah. that they can um, move on with their lives and their stories. Yes. Thanks, Alma. Now,